Welcome back to the Cordell and Cordell and Men's Divorce Podcast. I'm Scott Trout. I am CEO and managing partner of Cordell and Cordell. Every week, twice a week, we bring you information for guys before, during, and after divorce and everything related to family law, giving you tips, talking points, and some educational information uh, as you face these tough issues. Certainly in the 33rd week of our pandemic, we will talk a little bit about COVID and its effects on family law and the issues related to guys and family law in today is no different. We're joined by a Cordell and Cordell attorney in our Florida office. Welcome, Christina. Scott, thanks for having me on. Hey, thanks for joining. I know you joined us in our virtual town hall, but again, now on our podcast. So today, before we get uh, to your topic, which really talking about houses and housing market and what's going on and how it applies to family law and maybe you know send some guys in the right direction uh keep in mind not legal advice as always we always talk about uh, your case your circumstances your facts are particular and, and peculiar in that you know you need to have a consult with an attorney who practices exclusively in family law like we do at cordell and cordell uh, and you certainly can schedule a consult if you want at 866 dad's law or you can go to the web at cordellcordell.com to get more information but this shouldn't be taken as an attorney-client relationship just simply because we have 10 minutes and we're going to talk just about general issues that don't necessarily uh, interwo or aren't interwoven into your facts. So knowing that, uh, make sure to tune into our virtual town hall in November coming up. Again, you can log in live for an hour, ask questions and get answers right then and right there. So check out our website for more information or go to our YouTube page or YouTube channel for Cordell and Cordell. You can find out all the information you want on some various topics, including past town halls. Uh, get a flavor for how that goes and hope to see you in November. So Christina, let's talk about in our you know, few minutes that we have today to kind of fill guys in the housing market. And, uh, you know, we hear it, but, you know, it's got this you know, ups and downs and what's going on. And um, maybe you can talk a little bit about what's happened through August in terms of buying and the concerns and what's happening, especially in Florida, where you are. Sure. So, um, it seems like economic concerns have eased a bit in August. Um, there's still significant uncertainty um, for the rest of the year, especially in the fall. Um, you know, there's a lot of predictions. It's going to be a long, bumpy road to recovery. Mm -hmm. um, and we may continue to see um, this. The real estate market for right now is very hot. Um, it's For right now, it continues to be that way. Um, we're ending the month of October, um, and it still continues to be that way. Um, the national median sales price has surpassed $300,000. Um, so this is a good way to basically gauge what's going to continue to happen yeah. for the rest of the year. And I think it's, it's a great topic because, I mean, gosh, 90 plus percent of the guys that, you know, come see us have an asset in real estate. And the question becomes, all right, timing wise, is this a good time to go through a divorce? Because one, am I going to be required to? Do I need to sell? Should I sell? What happens to the house? And we'll get to that and kind of in conclusion, generally speaking, but getting some information like with any typical downturn in the economy, it's always good to kind of get a perspective of what do I do in a downturn? And, and now with housing being kind of the rebound and looking at things and it's a hot seller's market, it, maybe it's the right timing and get the best and most for your asset and you need to downsize. But as you think through this, as we can kind of get to that point, as it relates to guys, mortgage rates, historic lows, right? Yes. Um, yes, that's, that's right. So that is another option that um, men going through a divorce have. Um, it's not just sell, sell the home. Um, they can refinance at a very low interest rate, um, take their spouse's name off of the mortgage, and now they can keep that asset um, and just give the wife their share, their interest in, in the marital home. Yeah, the refinance is a big deal. I was just talking to a client yesterday. That's part of the negotiation as we try to resolve it. They want to keep the house uh, and st one party stay in and, and, it, and they want to get one of them off the, the mortgage. And what better time to do it than now? Their mortgage rate that they have is, you know, probably three quarters to a point too high. That's certainly an option that you really need to consider for guys that are thinking about it and they want to keep the house or buy their spouse out, right? And so they should, you know, consider them the mortgage rates, right? Of course, um, that's very important. Yeah, and so um, the inventory as we think about it too, if they don't think about refinancing, um, 
it's difficult to find if you're a buy side, right? Very difficult right now. Um, and it, this is across the US. It's not just um, an issue that South Florida is experiencing where I'm from. Um, prices have risen in large markets. Um, new listings are moving very quickly. They're on the market for less than three months, mm -hmm. whereas typically they were on the market for about six months or more. Um, wow. The inventory in large real estate markets has decreased by 38% and nationally by 36%. Uh, so now buyers have to look at other options. Well, do I have to go look at a, a less dense suburb? Um, do I have to look at a condo? Um, and these are some of the situations that we're, um, that our buyers are experiencing. Um, for example, they're looking at less dense suburbs in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Um, Reynoldsburg, Ohio, Rochester, New York, Melrose, Massachusetts. Um, the top metros right now are Chattanooga, Tennessee, Naples, Florida, and Fort Lauderdale, Florida. For some dads out there, the coronavirus pandemic has become a pretext to limit access to their children. Other dads have been pushed out of key decisions affecting their children's lives. If you're one of those dads, Cordell & Cordell is here for you, as always, but with expanded services. We can meet you in person or by video conference on weekdays, evenings, or weekends. Our goal is to step up our service to meet your needs now. It's kind of one of the things that when guys are going through and they're considering divorce, they don't think about that. That's why I thought this was such a unique topic is its effect in the decision process and what you want to do with the home. And it may be that you even convince your spouse it's the right time to sell because you both will get more equity. You can get, I can tell you, I have good friends that are in the real estate business here in Missouri and they're getting 10, 15 offers on a, on a listing that's been up for a week and they're getting 20, 30, 40,000 over asking. I mean, it's yes. crazy because as you suggest, really it's a buyer's market in that the buyer demand because there's not enough inventory. It's a seller's market in that and they're just overpaying for an asset. And so it may very well be the best thing to do. And I mean, there, it creates all kinds of strategies as I'm talking through that. I mean, maybe you wind up giving the access to a spouse to buy them out of maintenance or to, it's just an easy way to do it and it doesn't impact your cash flow. So, you know, here we're, you know, got uh, two months left in the year. What are we thinking or what are you hearing for 2021? Is this going to go on for a period of time for the housing market or what are we hearing? So um, economists are thinking that it, uh, home price growth will flatten for 2021. Inventory is going to continue to remain low. Um, they anticipate a W-shaped recovery uh, due to the uncertainty of the virus in the fall and winter. There's lack of confidence in the economy. And a lot of people ask, well, are we going through another housing bubble? And a lot of economists are saying, no, it's not exactly the same as when we had the last bubble. So that is some positive news. Yeah, I think the W is right. Um, I have some uh, friends in Indianapolis and Indiana same thing, they're seeing this mad rush of people buying and then all of a sudden it's dipped down and then it's back up. And this was back probably in August, September, now October, they're hitting the, the valley again. And it's just this yeah. cyclical wave, whatever it may be. And, and as we approach the winter, historically, I'm told that winter is not necessarily a great period for selling or buying, in, especially in the cold areas. It may be different in South Florida and that brings up kind of where you are in the South Florida market. What's sure. going on there particularly? So the housing market down here is, um, again, it's very hot. Um, mm -hmm. We have a lot of condos. Um, so there's actually more supply for condos than there are for single family homes. But um, due to the pandemic, um, people that were historically living in condos have now looked outside to single family homes because they just don't want to continue to be um, living in a condo. They want to have that extra space, that uh, the yard space, you know, for their dogs or kids to play in and not be cooped up in their condo. Um, but at the same time, since single family homes are very rare, it's forcing people to, even first time home buyers, to have to go look at condos. Um, but it is a buyer's market for condos down yeah. here. That's crazy. And then, we used to have a lot of foreign buyers um, versus domestic, and that's kind of flipped. Um, 
you know, we still have a lot of people coming from New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. but it's still um, right now uh, more domestic buyers than foreign. Yeah, I gotta imagine you see, and we've heard at least on the news, people fleeing from the major metropolitan areas of New York for a number of reasons, right? COVID related, tax reasons related, the California is going to urban. I just wrote a big article about how Montana particularly is having a huge crush of new buyers come relocating from big markets where they're tired of being around COVID, they don't wanna spend the money and the taxes, and it's making inventory extremely low and driving prices extremely high. So you, it's interesting as you, you talk about that, how you know those particular relocations um, from New York, New Jersey, Illinois, Massachusetts, I, I get it, I, I see it, and I'm reading those same articles as well. And so I guess then the question becomes this, um, guys listening, what should they be thinking about, you know, and I had this very same question for my client uh, yesterday. Should I sell my house right now in the middle of the divorce? Do I wait till the divorce is over? Do I negotiate it? Really kind of, I know the facts and circumstances will, will matter, but what are you thinking and what are your thoughts on that? Sure. So I just had from my client this question about two days ago, same thing. Should I sell my house right now? Um, look, I can't tell you what the housing market's going to be in 2021, but I can tell you that right now it's good for sellers. So you may be getting more money for this asset. Um, but other things that you can consider are, well, do I have to pay alimony? Could I give my spouse the asset and then not have to pay alimony at the same time if you're both going to sell the house then do you both have somewhere to go yeah. um could you buy in this market um would that baby the fact that your wife now has to find her own residence would that increase your alimony payment to her because she's paying more for a yeah. residence right now um also you could consider refinancing. Um, there's just a lot, like you really need to consider your facts, your particular situation, and then um, make that decision for yourself. Something else I suggested to my client as well was um, maybe an extended closing date. So that mm -hmm. gives you enough time to look for another place because that's gonna be difficult for you as well. Yeah, I think it's so unique. The, the one thing, and I, I think that as you were alluding to, is planning disgusting? We talk about this every week, strategizing, having a consult with an attorney because this oftentimes the home is the largest asset. You may have that secondary or to a 401k or retirement plan. And so why not really think hard about how do I use it? How can I use it to negotiate? How can I use it to offset something that I really don't want to do? Maybe it's maintenance, alimony, spousal support. You know, what can I do with that equity? What is the most appropriate and how does it affect everything going forward? And uh, it's sometimes it's overlooked by like, oh, I just have this burden. I need to get rid of it. Or maybe you wind up letting her buy it from you and it's overpriced. We get it appraised. And in this market, now you're actually pulling more money out. There's just so many things you can do with this house, the largest asset that you have. That's why we always talk about making sure you save the largest asset. Don't get in that you know, mindset of, well, she's living there. I'm not. She can just pay it or I can let it go into foreclosure. Probably a bad idea, right? Probably a really bad idea in this market, yeah. <laughs> right. So, well, that's great stuff, Christine. Thank you so much for joining today and giving guys a, kind of a, a unique perspective on what they should do with their largest asset and and uh, it really just stimulate a conversation and it really emphasizes the need for guys that are listening right now. Mm -hmm. If you haven't had a conversation with an attorney, uh, you need to contact one who specializes that or just does focus exclusively on family law. So thanks again for joining and uh, bringing this great topic. Yeah. All right. So reach out to us if you want to schedule a consult. You can find us on the web at cordellcordell.com or 866-DADS-LAW. We're available via Zoom just like this, or you can do it on the phone or in person where appropriate and allowed, keeping health and safety as a priority. So until next time, have a great week.